Hi guys! In this video, we are going to give you 10 suggestions on what to visit in the Czech Republic. If you are visiting Prague and you have a spare day, you can easily turn it into a day trip. Just watch this video till the end to find out which one is the best option for you. And we'll start with our number 10, which is Karlovy Vary, located in Karlovy Vary region. Karlovy Vary is a spa town. It is famous for its hot springs that can be found in beautiful colonnades in various spots of the city center. I definitely recommend trying the spring water at least once. Just be aware that it's not like the bottled mineral water and it's boiling hot. I didn't get that, even though I saw all the steam coming out of it first time I tried it and I burned my whole mouth palate, so don't make my mistake. It's all about taking it slow here. Enjoy the beautiful views, drinking the ocean water, and sitting in restaurants. But if you want to add some more activities to your bucket list, you can check out Moser Glass Factory or Beherovka Distillery. The only downside of visiting Karolu Vary is the time you will spend getting there. It is around two hours by bus and by train. But the town itself is pretty small, so I think one day should be enough to see most of it. A more adventurous option is a trip to Krivoklad Castle. Adventurous because you will need to change trains to get there and climb the hill to get to the castle. I think Krivoklad is a wonderful place to visit. It's open the whole year round. This castle has very interesting history and it's been very well taken care of. We visited it before. You can check it out in the description. You will need around three hours to visit the castle and another 30 minutes to see the viewpoint. Next one is the nature trip suggestion. If you want to see some Czech nature, definitely check out Bohemian Switzerland. Don't worry, it's not actually in Switzerland. It's just called that way because they said that it looked like Switzerland, but it doesn't. <laughs> Bohemian Switzerland is kind of like a huge nature amusement park where you follow the narrow paths between the rocks and the stream, take a boat, go through the forest, and finally reach the highlight of the park, Pravchitska Brana. My tip for visiting Bohemian Switzerland is getting there as early in the morning as you can, because the territory is huge and you will need a lot of time to explore it. Some people even stay there overnight because they have a lot of hotels and that will location. I didn't know that and I got there after lunch and was coming back home through the dark forest. That wasn't fun. I hope there were no wolves in there. Another nature trip suggestion we have for you is visiting Český Raj. Český Raj is located just one hour away from Prague by direct train to Turnov. To Turnov. It is a huge area over 180 square kilometers, so you have a lot of space to explore and roam around. And unlike Bohemian Switzerland, where you follow a certain trail for the most part, Český Raj is more open in that sense. I've fallen in love with our next suggestion last year when we visited it. It is Tabor. What makes this town special is that it was built to survive the apocalypse. By that, I mean the literal apocalypse. Check out our video to find out what the hell happened there. So what should you expect from visiting Tabor? You will see a really cute historical city center, visit interesting museums, and take lots of pictures of nice architecture. Tabor is a pretty well-known town among Czech tourists and not so much among foreigners. It takes around two hours to get there and you will need around four to five hours to see most of it. Our next suggestion is gonna be very different from the ones before or the ones to come because it's a trip to a former concentration camp Terezin. Terezin is located on the north of the Czech Republic. Unlike other concentration camps in Europe, this one was not destroyed after Second World War for less obvious reasons. We talk about it in our video, which we will link down below. But the fact that Terezin had remained largely unaltered makes a trip there a unique and rare opportunity. Pretty easy to get to Terezin from Prague, there is a direct bus that leaves from Nadraji Holyshovice. You can visit both the former Gestapo prison in the small fortress and explore the former ghetto in the big fortress and visit the museums. Overall, I'd say it will be a full day trip. And if you're traveling to Czech Republic because of the beer, I think you should go to our next suggested place, which is Pilsen. This is actually where we're going now, so check out our video about it, and if this video is not out, subscribe to our channel and stay tuned, because it's coming out soon. Pilsen is where the biggest Czech brewery is located, Pilsner Brewery. The visit there is definitely a highlight of your trip to Pilsen. They do tours there multiple times a day in Czech, German, and English, so definitely book your spots ahead of time. The tour is around two hours long and they show you every corner of the brewery and even take you to the beer cellars. One of a kind experience. The rest of Pulsing is also worth visiting. 
It takes an hour 20 minutes to get to Polzain from the train station in Prague and you will need around 4 hours for both the brewery visit and the historical center visit. But you can for sure make it longer. The closest place to Prague on our list today is Karolstein Castle, located just 45 minutes away from Prague by a direct train. This is a no-brainer. If you want to see some medieval place and not spend too much time getting there or figuring out how to get there, go to Karolstein. We made a video about it in the past so you can check check out and find out more about Karolstein's history and we definitely recommend signing up for the tour of the castle. Just make sure to book it in advance. Overall, you will need around 3 to 4 hours there. It's quite a small place, so you can even make it half a day trip. And the second best place to visit on our list is Chesky Krumov. I'm sure some of you are wondering why this fairy tale town isn't number one. I've honestly lost count on how many times I've been to Chesky Krumlov, so I think it's definitely worth visiting, even though it's pretty touristy. It gets very busy during the summertime and during certain holidays, like Christmas holidays. So if you want to enjoy the emptier city, you will either have to visit off-season or stay overnight and enjoy it early in the morning or late at night. Most people go to Chesky Krumlov by bus. It takes around three hours one way and you will need at least four hours to see most of the city, which can make a day trip quite tiring. We actually stayed in Chesky Krumlov for three days last time we visited and we filmed it all for you. My last bone to pick with Chesky Krumlov is that its beauty is very different from a typical Czech little town beauty. It is mostly Renaissance and Baroque, which makes it more Italian in terms of style. But if you want to see some medieval Gothic things... And of course, the last one, our number one suggestion is... Kutna Hora. Are you surprised? I don't think so. Kutna Hora was built in series of accidents. First, some random poor monk discovered a silver mine there, which caused an avalanche of people moving to that place and building the city on top of the mines, and you can still visit it today. Then they decided to build a cathedral there, with priceless gothic frescoes that survived by chance. We explained it in the video as well. And the cherry on top of Kutna Hora's attraction is the Bone Chapel, decorated with thousands of human skeletons. Why, you might ask? Because once a monk decided to decorate it that way. Isn't Kutna Hora insanely interesting? Kutna Hora is super easy to visit. There is a direct train that leaves from Prague's main train station and takes only one hour to get there. We suggest you start your visit from the Bond Chapel and then go to the city center of Kutna Hora. Ah, this video is not over yet because we have three more honorable mentions for you. Number one is Prohonice Park. And I know, I know, it's technically still in Prague, but it's around 40 minutes away from Prague's historical city center. It's a nice, refined nature trip. You can take a longer hike there, which is around 10 kilometers long, or a shorter hike and just see the park, maybe the botanical garden and the chateau. Prohonice is open the whole year round. It's cheaper to visit it off season, so it's definitely our most budget suggestion. The second honorable mention is Adrspach Teplice Rocks. The nature there is stunning, but it's quite difficult to get there, so that's why it didn't make it to the top 10. I'll link their website down in the description so you can check it out. And our last honorable mention and the last place on today's list is Brno. Brno is the second biggest city in the Czech Republic, so it definitely deserves its place in our video today. It's more of a city break. The city center of Brno is smaller than in Prague, but it still has lots of nice sites to visit. We definitely recommend booking your Tugendhat Villa visit months in advance, because you cannot get the tickets inside of the interiors on the day of your visit, most days unless you're super lucky. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching our video today. Let us know in the comments which day trip you're going to take when you're going to be visiting the Czech Republic. And we'll see you in our next video. Bye! And look at that. We are traveling first class today. First time ever. But only to Pulsing.